ASP.NET Web Forms Basic Server Controls. This video lecture will introduce you to the concept of basic server controls such as button and text box and walk you through their use in an ASP.NET Web Forms application. There are three different types of server controls in an ASP.NET Web Forms application. HTML server controls, web server controls, and validation server controls. In order to be a server control, regardless of which type, the tag must contain the run at server attribute. The form run at server tag in the master template is an HTML server control. HTML server controls are traditional HTML elements that have the run at server attribute. This allows you to interact with the HTML element in the server side code. Let's take a look at how we can use HTML server controls in a web forms application. So here I have an HTML div element with some text. In order to make it an HTML server control, I will add the run at server attribute. Let's take a look at that in the browser. So the second thing that you need on a server control, if you want to access it in your code behind, aside from the run at server attribute, is the ID attribute. On HTML server controls, this is the traditional lowercase ID attribute. The pattern that I follow and many ASP.NET developers follow in naming their IDs for server controls is to prefix it with the type of element followed by the purpose of the element. So I will call this div message. Now if we go to the code behind in our page load method, I can access the element and I can also add logic to hide the element. So let's set the visibility of that element to false. Let's build first. And now we should see the element disappear. Now I can also add attributes to the element in the code behind. So div message dot attributes dot add style. So it's a key value pair as attributes are a name or a key and a value. So I will add the style of color blue. I don't know. Yes, I do need that. Let's build this. And now we have it back because I removed the visible equals false and I added the attribute of style and the value of color blue. So now the text is blue. And if we inspect that element, you can see that it added the attribute of color blue. So the second type of server control is a web server control. These controls are named things like button, text box, drop down list, and allow you to interact with and create events for these controls. You can also bind data to these controls for dynamic content. Let's take a look at how we can use web server controls in a web forms application. 
I am going to add some text boxes. ASP text box. So a name, an email address. and age, txt email, txt age. So now we have three text boxes. And the thing to note about web server controls is they will be prefixed with ASP and colon. Now when you're in Visual Studio and you type in ASP colon, you will get some IntelliSense that displays a huge list of different kinds of controls that you can use. So three text boxes. And let's add a drop-down list. Your favorite color. DDL for drop down list, color, run at server, close that out. And I'm going to add list items. List items have a text that will display as the text as well as the value. So this will render out as an HTML select and these will have the items in the select items. So I'm going to go ahead and add several different colors here. We'll give them four different choices of colors. And let's also add a button. BTN for button. Submit, run at server. And the text on the button Submit info. Let's build that and check it out. So now we have name, email, age, your favorite color, and a submit info button. If we take a look at how these elements are rendered, the text box, is, text box is rendered as an input of type text. The drop down list is rendered as a select with options. And the button is rendered as an input with a type of submit. So notice that all three controls have three controlled types, text box, drop down list, and button have the ID and run at server attributes. We can also add a class to these controls with the CSS class attribute. That will become the class attribute when the control is rendered to HTML. Let's take a look at how that renders in the browser. Let me build first. So I added a class. 
then you can see that it renders as an HTML attribute of class. So now I could style this text box with this class if I wanted to. Let's add one more control to this page. And let's steal this message box that we had here. And let's remove the run at server on it. And in the code behind, I will also need to remove this because it will give me an error because div message no longer exists. I deleted it. So back to contact. In here, let's add an ASP literal ID, LT for literal, message, run at server. What this will give me is the is a, is a placeholder to output whatever I want to in the code behind. So now let's add an event method to the button that will handle the display of a summary in this LT message box. On click, and we'll have it create us a new event. View code, and here we have a new event method button submit click. So, based on what the user inputted in those boxes, let's build up a message. So I am going to say string.format zero. You said your name is and your And your email address is your favorite color is. So now in the indexes here, zero, one, two, and three, in my string dot format method, I will pass in txt name dot value, sorry, dot text, txt age, dot text, txt email, dot text, and my drop down list color, dot selected value, and semicolon that will get us zero, one, two, three values. And let's output this in our literal control for LT message dot text. Building this. Reloading the page, this contact message will disappear. Make up an email address and an age. And my favorite color is green. Let's submit that info. And now that event was fired. And it says, you said your name is Bob Barker and your age is 67 and your email address is bob.barker at barkerbarker.com and your favorite color is green. I missed a period, but good enough. So now, now what happens if somebody comes here and they don't fill any of these out? Well, 
this is silly. So this is where the third type of control comes in. The third type of server control is a validation server control. Validation controls give you the ability to validate form fields such as text boxes and drop-down lists. You can require fields, require specific data types, as well as require regular expression matches on fields. Let's add some validation to the form we've created. So let's add an, a list item to our drop-down list that says, please choose a color and we will give it an empty value. This will allow us to validate this field. So I am going to add another type of control called a validator control. And I'm going to say required field validator run at server with an ID of RF B for required field validator name control to validate equals txt name validation error message is a star. So let's build that and check it out. Refresh the page. And as you can see, if I try to submit this, it doesn't submit. See, I didn't get my message here. And I get a little star. So on, so let's add a regular expression of validator to the email to make sure that the user inputs a valid email address. ASP regular expression validator run at server ID equals REV email control to validate equals txt email error message valid email address is required and then the validation expression i'm going to copy and paste that is a validation expression for an email and let's build that So my name is Bob, I don't want to fill this out, so whatever. And you can see it says valid email address is required. And you can see that this validation is happening client side. I'm not even submitting and it's giving me these validation messages. Now you can see that an empty field passed our uh, regular expression. So I can actually add two validators one, a required field validator, and another, a regular expression validator to the same control. Let's change this to required for some uniformity and build that and refresh the page. Now you can see that there is a bunch of space here and that can be fixed by adding a display equals dynamic which will keep it from reserving that space for the message. I believe it, it defaults to display equals static, which actually saves that space there for it, 
we want dynamic. So let's build that. And here we are. So let's do one more and add a required field validator to the drop down list. Control to validate, uh, DDL color, error message, color required. Let's build that. And as you can see, color is required. Bob, Bob Barker. And there we have it. So let's review. There are three different types of server controls in ASP.NET Web Forms. HTML server controls, web server controls, and validation server controls. In this video lecture, you were introduced to the concept of basic server controls such as button and text box. Thank you for listening.